right, so and we're we live. are we're live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode seven, five, six, seven. Yep. Um, and tonight it's just the trio. You've got the three of us. You've got Curtis, which is there. No, no, Curtis, no. Josh. I've done it wrong. <laughs> you it's too early. It's so too well. early. It usually takes me a couple of minutes to get used to. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, so you've got Josh and you've got Curtis with me tonight. Um, so as I said, episode seven, tonight we'll be talking about the new Z. Apparently huge, huge drama about that and a general Q&A, uh, which both all three of us have put on our, our socials to get questions to come in. Um, and I've got some random ones and some just more statements to share with you guys a bit later. Keep those comments alive. You've got the little <laughs> going, guys. Questions, statements. Anything you want to ask us, just literally chuck it in the comments. We're, we're, we're just literally going to sit here and chat to you guys yes. firsthand. We've got the Warzone trios. Warzone trios, boys. Ready to rock. <laughs> um, so if anyone plays Call of Duty Warzone and wants to link up with us, Leave your Activision thingamajig, and we'll we'll add you. Probably we're gonna, we're gonna the three worst players are in there. Yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, 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 oh okay. Curtis, 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 two, Curtis is two, actually two, pretty good. Just me and just just me and Mo. Um, so Josh me. is better than I am. Maybe I've maybe. recently just swapped from a controller yeah, to Josh. keyboard and mouse on the PC. So, yeah, that's that's new for me. <laughs> Changing your muscle memory. Shocking! Absolutely shocking, mate. Half the time I forget what's to crouch, what's to slide, what reload. Don't worry about it, mate. And you were rubbish with the controller, so imagine what it's going to be with the keyboard. I didn't, I didn't think you'd out me like that on live, but you know, here we are. Just gets outed. Hi, I'm Mo. <laughs> Being outed. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, going through as typical, we always like to know if audio is all good, video is all good. Let us know. Uh, just drop us a comment saying everything's all great. Um, just make sure we can hear everyone and uh, that we're all nice and clear for you guys. Tonight, proudly sponsored by McDonald's Coke No Ice. Oh, bro, about that, I forgot to get my typical water, so... Yeah, see, you done it wrong. Boy's going to get thirsty for this stream. The penalty is Pepsi and milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I actually have normal Pepsi this time, not vanilla Pepsi, so it <laughs> might actually not be that bad. Might actually be okay. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, Christian, thank you for letting us know. Is my camera still okay? No, you're looking fly. I don't know what you're worried about. No, no. I just yeah, I no, accidentally no, slid that's something. Fine. That's fine. It's no, okay. we swapped. No, you haven't. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, oh, Josh. What a lad. Thanks, mate. Just quickly, mate. <laughs> just, yeah. just, I had a bit of a moment there. I was Apologies. trying to keep pointing right, so now you'll get it right. Thank you so much. I thought you were in a, a Cloud9 rave, mate. Oh, uh, I need my glow sticks. Got no glow sticks. All right. Um, I'm, I'm just going to open up the discussion. Straight off the bat, what are you guys' thoughts on the uh, the new Z? Mo, hit us with your pure raw thoughts. Um, okay. So, I, I'm i not really sold yet because it's pre-production, as, you, as, as they say. Because do you remember when they released the 86? Everyone was like, whoa! When they released it, they're like, ah. The Supra was the biggest letdown because the prototype looked absolutely insane. And then they released it. I was like, oh, it looked like it's what have they done? <laughs> Honestly, the prototype Supra was just like thick, wide body, like, yeah. seriously aggressive. And then it comes out and it's just like, yo, just, just went into COVID for a year and skipped leg day every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, so I'm just literally going to wait till they release it. Although all the stats, all the information, everything they've told us is... Mickey Mouse, that's for sure. Mm, absolutely. Josh, huh? thoughts? I just started. Love it. Love um, My favorite part about is actually not even the car. Okay. Uh, it's, Eight o'clock. I guess the development. What do you want? Behind. So, uh, unlike the Supra. <laughs> so we got some yeah. internal conflicts on both <laughs> ends. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so sorry. And the so sorry. Was. <laughs> Good job, bro. Good job. I'm told, okay, start again. Start again on that one, Josh. Episode seven. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're back. <laughs> we are back. Sorry for that intermission. Um, development behind the car. So, yeah. 
and put their heart and soul, I guess, into it. Yep. Like with all their sort of cars. Um, obviously, with other other manufacturers, with the Toyota Supra combined, obviously with BMW and the 86 with the BRZ and things like that. Yep. So I just like the fundamentals behind what Nissan have put together. Okay. Um, not so phased about like the looks and everything. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but obviously, you know, that's probably 80% of what the car is going to be, there's going to be quite a bit of change going into the car interior. Yeah. So that's the idea of all this stuff. Like they're meant to release this and go, hey guys, give us what you think. Um, because if, if like 90% of people out there hate it, then I'm going to tell you there might be a few changes. <laughs> and looking into it, there's so much stuff, you know, falling back to all the old Zs. Yeah. The I manual. See... Biggest thing. Yeah. As soon as I saw the manual, I was like, yes. But it's the whole way through, they're really, really looking to go for like the enthusiasts. You know, they're really, it's kind of like they took the book of what Super didn't do right. And they were like, hey, let's read the comments on every single Super <laughs> forum and be like, all right, must be enthusiast, you know, you know, must cater for them. Uh, uh, okay, yep, yeah, let's look at this. Yep, yeah, okay, cool. Yep, yeah, we'll take that down. Everything that they did wrong in the forums to the Super, it's almost like they've, you know, kind of taken a note from it and gone, Let's make it for the driver, not make it for the, not just so much for the innovation and like collaboration and all the other stuff that's gone through, but it, there's so much that points back to, oh, look, this is upgrading our car, not just. And even the things like the headlights, the LEDs, how they go on sort of top and below. Yeah. That actually dates back to when you look at the 240Z through the, I think it was the, like the glass headlights, you could see the reflection. So that's what it looks like with the two LEDs. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, I think I'm, I'm excited for it. I mean, the one thing that a lot of people are doing at the moment is like they're, you know, they're comparing the Supra and the, the new 400Z, I think they're badged. 400Z, yeah. At, um, which is really fantastic because they're kind of giving away a couple of things in that, but I'll, I'll touch base. But when people are comparing like the, the, the new Supra, the, sure, the new Supra has like an aggressive look and it's got a lot more aero look to it. But with what they're doing with the 240 never really had like an aggressive aero look. Um, and so I think they're really able to stick to that. But again, if you look at the 240 when it came out, and even the 280, all the fair ladies, right? Um, they were quite slim, quite casual down the side. And this is what they're going for. Like they know, if you go see a fair lady now, 240, 280, or wherever you sit with that, you'll no doubt have, you know, front splitter, um, over fenders on them, and they'll look wide. You'll have 15 by eight to 15 by tens on them, and they just look great. And don't you know, I think it's fantastic that everyone loves that, but I like the fact that Nissan haven't gone, oh, cool, everyone aftermarket their car like that, we're gonna make it like that. Yeah, They've no. given us the base to do it. Um, yeah. And that's what I love. Like everyone's like, oh, I don't know about that front, fen uh, the front square grill. I'm like, that is the simplest front end that I've seen to create an aftermarket for. Like, there's nothing there that you need to abide by. The Supra, you have so much geometry that you have to stick with if you're going to create an aftermarket front end for it. Um, you know, so... Is it like, yeah, just stick a big air down here? She'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Liberty Walk or Kato just released the black one. Yeah. Um, the wide body kit, which looks chunky. Yeah. And the funny so part nice. Is, it's already got like the spec that the spec that was driven around the release, the the first look has already got 285 35s in the back, and mm. they fit to the rim. So we're at the moment, we're already looking at a wide back end, yeah, with stock flush guards. You know, like what the potential for that is 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 amazing and. I think the um, they'll say the the 400Z is very much so could be a hint at the engine that's going in it, which is the possible VR um, 30 DDTT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. three yeah. liter. Yeah. Um, from the, a Q50s or Q60s? Yeah, that's correct. And and I think the the hint of the 400 comes from the fact that that motor was making 400 horsepower. Um, yep. So yeah, I think although. Although, yeah. keep in mind, when they released the 370Z, it was meant to have 370 horsepower, and they came out with 350. Yeah. I, 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 think, I think they hint at the engine model, but, I mean, I'd be happy to just get a 300... I'd still be happy with a 370 horsepower, um, you know, VR30 DDTT to work off, 
than the yeah. you know the starting point. Yeah, yeah, like that's a great engine to start with. I mean, or if they came out with, I mean, depends on how far they went with the innovation. You mentioned if they came out with something that was between the three point eight and the three, like that'd be nice. And it's funny, um, two of the, I should say, Supra fanboys or the guys who know most about the old school Supras have surprised me. So Steve said in the comments there, new Supra, I see a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> so and he's, true. Got, he's obviously got V12 killer. Yeah, that's uh, in the progress of getting built and uh, reborn into a bigger beast than already was. Yeah, mental case. Um, and the other one that surprised me was um, Novik has got the V8 eater. So he yep. was talking to Super as well. And he's like, Nissan's done everything what Toyota stuffed up on. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Nice. <laughs> he literally sent that to me. So I just love the clean body that they've come out with because, like, let's be honest, if you're going to start an aftermarket scheme, like 86 came out, wasn't a complex body shape. It really wasn't. Um, when the Supra came out, that's a complex body shape. All that geometry, like to work with that, to mold to that, to add to that, to take away from that, like there's a lot of money involved. And I think like that really limits where your aftermarket is. Um, yeah. And sure, I think the Toyota Supra was going down like a line that was like, hey, we're going high end. But like, I reckon this new 400Z is going to be really, really quite great for you know the youtubers out there that can do all their home mods on it then you've got developers out there and you know the full aftermarket um audience it's just such a clean shape to build off where do you think price point's gonna sit good question i hope like sub 80k i hope i, I th like entry level and then have your you know like a nismo model that'll be about your 100k maybe i don't know I think that's respectful. I mean, like the 70K is where I think it was in like that 699 area. I think that's where it's going to start. And I think the reason why that, because of the market that surrounds that right now. Um, if you really I look at where the market it, surrounds. Yeah, that 60 to 80 would be working well. If they're touching the 100K for a like a normal model or their, their model, it's going to be hard. Yeah. Uh, so we've just got literally two people that have just said that the manual is... So, so we've got Joe and Christian. So Joe's just said that he's not a fan of the front end, but he likes all the ideas behind it and where the manual's going. And Christian just said that, you know, they'll sell because of its manual. And mm. 100%, again, it's like it caters to that enthusiast car. Manual, turbo, to... rear-wheel drive. Like, can it get any better? Yeah. <laughs> With the Are you talking about mesh chassis? <laughs> <laughs> but it's already set up quite stylish. The only thing that I... The funny part was is... Um, so actually, what we'll do is we'll change our... Um, we can actually change over to a little slideshow that some images that I've actually gathered from the net. But um, the one thing that when I first saw it was the back end kind of reminds me of a Mustang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first word that you think of, Mo, when you see that. Quick. First um, word. First word? What do you mean? Like what comes to my head straight away? Yeah. Look at my teeth. That's not a word, but anyway. That's well, a... fucking statement, all right? Whatever. That's... Yeah, I see what you mean about the back. Yeah, that back end. Just but I don't, I don't mind it. Like, I it's really, not ugly. I, I really don't mind it, but it's... I like the, the black it. roof and the two Tony. Yes. It reminds yes. me of the 300 ZX, the back of that. Well, yeah. That's, so they, they said the inspiration was the... Was it the 280 was the inspiration? And then they pulled the, um, the 300. Uh, was there was there two biggest inspirations for the body shape? But you can look at the like look at the roof line where it starts and the door. It's like three seventy Z. Yeah. So it's almost like a three seventy Z door right there. Uh, Ed, she doesn't like the car either. Nah. Curtis, you've lost sound. Oh. Oh no, there you are. You're back. I'm back. Yep, you're back. Imagine if it comes out in that fluoro color as well. That would be Oh, cool. that'd be cool. I'm actually really keen to see where the colors, like the colors set. But again, I hope they do bold, like yellow, red, orange, blue, blue, you know, like the colors that don't come out anymore. I, I see this as like, I imagine the blue, like um, uh, typical YouTuber, that doo blue, that really nice, 
Is it a sky blue? Is it a baby blue? Like it's in between that, but it's just like this mm. really just mid blue, really nice clean blue. Um, and what we've got to remember is it, this is not exactly the production car. Yeah, yeah no, this is going to be the the teaser, so they say. Yeah, I really hope they stick to it. I mean, like you really, again, if you looked at the concept Supra, that was extravagant. That was. It was a big leap, like a really, really big leap. I don't know how much you can really simplify this even more. You know, like, I think where this sits at the moment. What does it need? What does it need? I think it needs some air ducts of some sort. Like vents? Vents, ducts, over the guard. Like near the, near the rear uh, rear wheel on that, that quarter panel there, or in, on the back, some slits. <laughs> you really want it to go Mustang, don't you? <laughs> I'd probably remove that tire riding though. Oh, I don't know where it sits at the moment for me. I I love the body lines because I think track wraps and liveries, right? I look at that that side design and the lines and how they work. I love how the back the front of the works. car. Just look at look at that. The front yeah. view is so nice. It's a stance that's quite nice. Um, I think it could do with a little bit more in that, that front end. Um, they should have done some DRLs in that, that straight line there or a vent there to cool the brakes. It, I think it that would have been a good brake duct. 100% I think it needs a vent there. And I think that, but again, look where the lines are. Engineer, are. Look where the lines huh? are on that front are you an engineer? Am I an engineer? <laughs> yeah. Practice. Yeah. I, uh, you know your 35 GDR, the air intakes? I was the one who, no, who I, looked over it. You blew, blew, your air was blowing through there. Yes, to check, to make sure it was aerodynamically stable for your garage. <laughs> that was a test. Hey, saying, talking about 35s, apparently about 10% of the car is from a 35. Oh, that's, that's good. Even if it was 1%, I'm like, this here has the DNA of a 35 GDR. Yeah. So James, right. James reckons that the back end won't happen. Um, it's, it's just too classic looking for the general market. Okay. I think it's probably the most complex part of the car. It's the most busiest part of the car, in my opinion. It's, you've got a lot of, um, you know, we've probably got more vertical lines here than we do on the rest of the car. Um, the rest of the car really supports the horizontal line from the back wheel arches, the front um, literally being more brought out from the uh, horizontal lines and even down the side. Um, but the back is probably the busiest area. Again, you're right. Probably the biggest part that they could change. Um, I'm just really keen to see not so much where the release sits, but where the aftermarket sits. If you look at where all of the panels line up and where all the panel lines are, and then just think of how you can literally detach that and then put something else there and how much that becomes modular for that car. Do you know, maybe another thing why they've done it to be so simple is, like you said before, is to get feedback. Do you know what I mean? They, they want to hear what people think of it. And, you know, I'm sure there's people out there that look into that sort of stuff in the company. Ooh. What's everyone's thoughts? Down in the comments, guys, what's your thoughts on the interior of this car? Um, does it live up to your expectations? What would you add? What don't you like? Um, my, my straight off the bat, I have full leather interior in the Audi. It's amazing in winter, heated seats, everything's great. In summer, I literally have something to peel off and that's just not great. So I, I actually don't, I'm not complaining with the, the cloth inserts in the middle here, but the material itself, the mesh material just seems really, really courageous for belts. <laughs> I hope they go Alcantara, like a nice Alcantara insert or something like that. It'll be... Is Alcantara really present in like JDM style? I know like in the 35... You've put Alcantara in there, yep. but was there any in there to begin with? Is Alcantara really present in a in that you know Japanese? Nah, market? it's more it's more high end Euro. It's Euro, isn't it? Yeah. Porsche. Does the thirty five GDR have Alcantara in the center? Not standard. What was standard? Just cloth. It was leather. Oh, leather standard. Oh, because the Nismo has got center Alcantara. Yeah. Gotcha. I love the center console. I think it looks. <clears throat> really really quite nice um i mean i love virtual cockpits like virtual cockpits are just oh look at that manual shifter 
Right, look at that. Manuel. Oh, I'll go back to that. Sorry, straight out of the Z. Looks like a straight out of the Z. Even just for the fact that it looks so short already. Um, yeah. The throw. <laughs> the throw already looks so short. I mean, it's a short wheelbase, short throw. Twin turbo V6. I, I, I think this is going to be quite the, quite the nice track. I don't know why they put the start stop button there. Oh, it annoys the hell out of me. Actually, it, it, that, it annoys me. Why? Why? Put it where the Ooh. key would go. Put it where the key would go. Exactly. Exactly. The yeah. thirty-five you can sort of live with because it's like down here, but like that would do my head in. Why? Okay, I'm just gonna turn traction control off, guys. Turn the car off. <laughs> <laughs> It's got, I'm sure it's got safety <laughs> parameters where you can't do that, bro. Yeah, I know, but it's a manual, so it's like... Eh. Is that a Mazda thing? Or, or you're going... Sh or you're going to go put into the sports shifting mode where it's got synchro rev match, turns the car off. Like, <laughs> what do you want? But don't you find, even even like with the Mazda, I find that a little bit annoying where it is behind the steering wheel and stuff like that. No, I, I hate it behind the steering wheel. I think it's really nice it's... to hop in the car and... Oh, they the... have moved it a bit lower with the new generation. It's like there. It used to be up here, now it's like there. Why can't it just know. be I there? I kind of like the hand. Well, like, when I jump in a car, like you, you kind of like jump in and just, you know, sure, old cars, yes. But like when I jump in the car, first thing, right hand on the steering wheel, after you close your door, hand goes down to the console. If you can just press that start button, everything comes alive. Like you can sit back and watch your car come alive. I kind of like that feel. True. Uh, it's it's my like the middle is okay, the worst is behind the steering wheel, and the worst is behind oh, the steering wheel. Oh, stupid! Absolute stupid! You can't even see it. Gonna give Josh a big head here because as everyone knows, Josh works for Skoda, but yeah. Skoda's start stop button is in the great spot where the key goes. <laughs> is a button. No. <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs> uh, nothing did my head in more. Then my Golf R's start stop button. There is one thing actually I will comment. So when I want to start the Audi without hopping in the car, I obviously oh, have yeah. to make sure the key's in there. But brake. yeah, brake pedal. So generally open the door, brake pedal, lean in, press the start stop in the center console. I'll admit that is bad. You might as well just get in the car. Just get you in the car. Might as well just get in the car. A hundred percent. You may like your key it's... has to be in. You yeah. put on the brake pedal and then the start stop. If it was more accessible from the door area, yeah, I can, I can kind of see that being great. But again, you still have to have your foot on the brake pedal and like safety, Curtis. It's safety. Oh yeah, just like <laughs> just like when you're driving at 80k's and Mo decides to turn the car off. Apparently, <laughs> actually talking about the cars you've had before, Mo. The other 40k's and less. The Golf huh? R. Yeah. Um, where the mode selection is, we can't see because yep. the key should Yeah, be no, because it's on the other side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Germans, it's all good for them because the steering wheel's on this side. But yeah. for Australia, it's like, oh, I've got three blank buttons, but all my buttons are on this side. Yeah, brain damage. Can't see. I have, I have four yeah. mode selects. Like I can select my mode four different ways. I can select. Yeah, eco, dial. normal, comfort, and race. No, 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 no four no, different modes. Buttons. I mean, I can select my mode four different ways. I can select it from the center dial going through the menus. Oh, what the heck? I can select <laughs> it from a button. I can select it from my steering wheel. And then I can select it from the inside where the odometer part is. Audi, just in case you forget where the other three are, there's four. Yeah, they give you four options. So when you're doing 80 k's, you don't turn the car off. <laughs> it doesn't turn off at 80 k's now. If you're doing 40 k's or less, it will turn off. Safety precautions. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's worse than when turning a car off when you're still moving and the automatic electronic handbrake engages. But you'd know all about that going 100. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> you know, Actually, you planted your car. Yes. I did 20 knots down the human mind. <laughs> true, true, true. And get electrocuted in the same the same time. You're driving along, South Gippie Highway, doing 80Ks, 90Ks, 100Ks. I don't know what speed limit is. It's just a guide to help you. Yep. The, apparently the 80 sign is just a guide, Josh Batson. It's ish. Like there is, you don't it. see it that well, but if you put on the right sunglasses, there is I S H afterwards. It's... Dog is uh, dogs in the passenger side, and um, puts his paw over, uh, she puts her paw over, and turns the car off. Oh, <laughs> you no! no. <laughs> yep, it happened. That's a flaw in in a thirty five GDR. We should definitely contact Nissan about that one. Fix it in the four hundred Z Nissan. <laughs> 
Or just move the start stop button, man, because Lexi can get to that still. <laughs> Stephen uh, said that the Z31 Fairlady still looks better. I, yeah, um, so, I've just sent a photo to our inbox if you want to have a look at it. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed this. The, the one thing that I'm finding at the moment, like, there are so yeah, many Steve papers was, out there. from the 60s. He was born in the 60s, pretty much. <laughs> Can't beat memorabilia, dude. <laughs> um, the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of people do, like, I saw Tune do it, and, like, so many people on, on groups are, like, comparing the new release concept to a completely wide body modified full kitted out fair lady with wide wheels that are literally everything's from the last 10 years everything's aftermarket there's nothing standard yeah. which do you prefer there's, what comparison is that like that's like comparing the gr super versus like one that's been track ridden because it's got a full wide body it's got this it's got that it's like i don't know which one i'd prefer like I don't even think about it. Actually, it doesn't have a mechanical handbrake. I don't know. Do you have a different photo? Because if it has a mechanical handbrake, might bring it to our winter and drift days. <laughs> it would be really cool if it did. Although, although, as uh, Corey Nolan and Daniel Taylor will tell you, they were drifting the M2s, which is DCT and electronic handbrake. Doable. They were using handbrake. But they have the drift huh? mode, don't they? Do they? I'm pretty sure they have a drift mode. Ah, oh, okay. They cool. wouldn't use handbrake to initiate the drift. No, that's what I mean. Like, you don't need to have a handbrake oh, to initiate. Awesome. But have you got an interior photo, Curtis, of the handbrake area? Uh, let's see if I can try and find. I don't think it does. But maybe Christian's right. I don't know. Yes. Yes. We yeah, do. Wow. What? We have the standard handbrake. However, I hope it doesn't stay on this side for Australian vehicles. <laughs> Oh, imagine reaching over. Wait, hold on a second. Is the 370Z handbrake on that? Oh, I need to have a look at this. Ask Steph, she's watching us, isn't she? She can answer us in the... 100% James. James uh, has just said... Like, oh, it is! Compared to the Bugatti versus a fully modified Supra. Like, 1993, 1,000 horsepower. 2010, 1,000 horsepower. Like, just because some digits aligned, you can create some kind of photo out there and say... Which do you prefer? Like, no, you have to have a fair comparison. <laughs> like, okay, is there right, a so question? Am I asking? Which just the heads up. And that of the Supra. Huh? Sorry. The Z, the Z or the Supra? Z. Z. I believe. Hundred percent Z. This is pure speculation, but I believe the aftermarket availability for what the Z is going to have, like the potential in that area, is going to create something that's going to rival the accessibility of and the customizability of an 86. Like, how many Supras out there do you see with how many kits? Now count how many kits you have for the 86. The thing is, Supra is like six times the price of an 86. Again, I think that the Z is going to be able to provide, you know, that aftermarket availability. And there you go. Steph said it's on the left-hand side. Yeah, it's on the left. I just got a photo if you want to have a look at it. So we have to go across the cup holders. So if you've got a Macca's Coke in the center, you can't drift, man. There's a drink in the way. Well, you can. You just gotta have long arms. True. They might, they might. Go, go, gadget arms. Feedback. Again, hmm? James, completely agree. You know, the Z kept more to the, the Japanese styling. It, it's like, it's still got, I, I look at the interior and I see Euro. The only reason why I see Euro is because Euro do shit first. Um, you know, we, we talked about this quite a while back where you know, 2006, uh, sorry, 2015, I had a 2006 Passat, bought it secondhand, and then my mate bought a 2015 VF wagon and was like, bro, I got like heated seats and shit, and I got, you know, it's so cool, I love the new car because it's got all these new additions, and I'm like, I have a 2006 that has heated seats, vented seats, leather seats, like everything you have plus more, and it's 2006, it's, it's nine years old, uh, older than yours. I think we associate this new style with Euro because it, it's been done there first. But I love I love the interior. So what was the split on the poll that I uh, put up, guys? What are your what are your punts? Put your punts out there. Can't shift with anything in the cup holder, said Steph. What That's because she's got short arms. <laughs> T Rex. I I was going for a three fifty at one stage. I hopped in, I whacked my head and I'm like, 
I'm literally sitting there like this. I'm like, wow, like it's going to cost me so much to have a 350. Some for the car, some for the neck reduction. Like they're, they're a small car. Mo, what do you reckon it was on the split? Um, Super fast. Probably 60, 40. I, I, I don't know where the stats would be, but I reckon people are going for the dead. Oh no! Wow, we. We didn't know this conversation, guys. Eighty yeah, twenty. The tribe has spoken. Eighty twenty. Eighty twenty. That wow. was. I'll tell you the stats now. That was. Uh, so I did it on my private uh, Instagram and on the Vivid Instagram. <clears throat> uh, yep. So and I only did it today, so it's not that many votes. But that was about eight hundred votes. Wow. So Supra, 80% said the Supra. 80% said the Supra, 20% said the Z. Damn. I, think, I think it's, people are going off what they see on the car and they think that's how the car's going to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because remember pre-production, obviously. Yeah. Which it's not, guys. So don't stress. I think I actually got this wrong. I think it actually looks like Alcantara in the middle there. On the seats. Well, it's Alcantara top, top bit. Gauge pod. Nah, the middle looks all oh, Alcantara clothy. It does look Alcantara clothy. They'll, they'll probably have different tiers anyway. They'll probably I wish I right. wish it had a flat bottom steering wheel. Seriously, I miss my flat bottom steering. Yeah, but that only serves a purpose for a, a specific reason. Like, bro, Japanese people are small. They don't have long, tall legs. So the reason for the flat bottom is for you know. 100%. Behemoths. Tall people like me. You ain't getting a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I want a flat bottom steering wheel for my Mazda. I wonder if it can be done. I wonder how the capacity is going to be in the back. None. You seen the 370? None. It's going to open like Behind a the hat. seats, you'd be lucky to fit a loaf of bread. But then you got the boot thing. Yeah, it's going to be like a hatch. You can fit a guitar in there. I tried that before. Yeah. No, I mean, like, you know how you got storage behind the seats? Oh, I was going to say, I don't think people are going to be sitting behind that, mate. <laughs> Amputees. No, no, behind the seats, you got storage. They should do, like, the ZX, like a two-seater and then a two plus two. That'd be cool. Yeah. I don't know about the badge on the rear hatch bit. But yeah, it's throwback. I love it. Back to the fair lady. Yeah. I love it. True. Yeah, it's it's a real wink back to the uh, to the nostalgic fair lady. But again, it might not even come out like that. You know, it's just. I know. True. No, no. Like if you if you've heard it on Facebook, it's true. You know, you've heard it here first, people. This is one hundred percent true. Exactly Everything like we've that. said here tonight. Um, we are technically the uh, you know, the the next people developing this classic. You know. That photo where the front photo that you there's going through the cycle looks so much like a stinger. Oh, yeah. Now that you just mentioned yes. it. No, I see that. It's, it's like a version. Sure. light bulb. Yeah, yeah. It's a skinny, it's a keto diet stinger. <laughs> yes, indeedy. See, just look at, look at where this, um, you know, these, the lines on the front bumper start and end, like where they actually are. Um, it really, it really allows for so much to happen for the car, the panels, for everything to be customized. Um, I, I'm already imagining like vented top um, front fenders, like um, canards on this is kind of going to be one of those things. It's it's been interesting. The splitter, is miss, yeah. The splitter is already going to complement, um, you know, what's already there, which you know it looks like it's kind of got this carbon fiber esque racing splitter body type I don't know yeah there'll be lots of aftermarket stuff for it for sure I'm, I'm extremely excited for that factor um, again I like I look at, at Tom's car uh, 86 who we've had on the um, on the stream and like I look at that car and I'm like damn like I would go for that I would buy I would legit look at that and go mm, I, I'd, I'd buy something like that Mm. They should bring out like a base model and then a higher spec. Yeah. <clears throat> and I look at the normal 86 and I'm like, yeah, 
interested. Well, that's what I mean. If they did a base model one, which was around the 60, and then the top spec 80 something, but you've oh, got to give 20 grand of value. 50 with a four banger. Oh, like, yeah, I banger, guess. You'd have to, you'd banger. literally have to start with 39 mark. 39 to 40. Oh, it'll be, no, it'll be, it should be NA, v, uh, NA V6, and then you've got the twin turbo six. I, I can respect But then, that. like, cloth interior. Buy the NA, put an LS in it. <laughs> Ruin. <laughs> James has said tiny. It looks very tiny inside. The cabin space is narrow looking. Mm. RIP to bigger guys. I I also like it because it doesn't look like it's it's too cockpitty. Um, like if you guys have seen the the new C eights and stuff, um, and even oh, like, I love it. I love the new C eight. I hundred percent agree that there is the driver's car where. You know, you want to be enclosed by all of everything that controls the car to make you feel like you're a part of that car so you have access to everything at every point in time. But then there's also that daily driver part where you've got a partner or you've got something... You, you just want comfort and not to feel claustrophobic all the time. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think this really ticks that box. I think it looks sporty. Wall still having the gauges, you know, the gauges let you know what the car is doing, it, it gets you involved. We don't even know what the potential is for that virtual cockpit look, uh, what they're going to have on those displays. I would love, I would love to see like a race mode type thing um, yeah. or a drift mode where or it yeah, turns red. Yeah, yeah, like something like that. Uh, with even, uh, I think um, it the SRT, lights. the Jeep SRT that changes its gauges to race goes from white to red yeah well there's a lot of cars out there that, like um uh, mclaren has an actual shifting in the seven oh, yeah. um you have like even going back to like the s2000 grounds where you've got um your ground the, the huge the digital rev yeah i would love to see something like with shift lights and just that integration for again like if you're driving the, obviously that would be more for the automatics um Probably not so much for the manuals, but you know, I still think it's. Hey, Mo, but you're talking about you know you fitting into small cars. You owned a small car before. Yeah, a little Celica. That wasn't small. It's uh, probably similar size to a Z. Yeah. Interior. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was that? I wasn't this cool? big back in. Uh... <laughs> two thousand. Damn it! To the year two thousand. There's your comparison, guys. There's your uh, your fair lady to your uh, the new z's it's um getting in and out of the Celica was hard work but i wasn't as wide body kitted back then so it wasn't as hard <laughs> now <laughs> bit of a struggle. thanks <laughs> thanks rona <laughs> yeah. yeah currently sporting the liberty walk wide body kit thanks to rona so <laughs> i'm just looking at the back rear fenders now and i don't know what it is from this angle it just screams aston martin yeah like the, the the slide and then drop. I actually think it's also the fact that in the side, um, just after the door, it, it drops down, um, creating like that, the vantage style look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I, I'm, I really love it. To be honest, like if someone said, I'd have to see what the figures are and how it sounds and all the rest of it. If someone said, like, swap the RS3 for one of these, I'd, I'd definitely contemplate this. Yes. Chuck in the pre-orders. Motec, are you on? What? Putting a, what? a group buy? No. Nah. That's group buy? No way. You're a rat. Probably. Let you want one? in the comments below. What oh, price no. would you pay for right. Like, realistically. I'll have a white one. Like, if it came out in that 60s mark, is that viable? Like, do you see that as... Would you put a pre-order in? $1,000, non-refundable deposit, would you put one in? No. I have to see the specs. Like, I really would have to see the specs. I need to know what it looks like in the end, otherwise I'm burning $1,000. No, okay, you think it looks like that? You're not Can we also acknowledge from this angle here, that front end actually comes out a lot more. It's very Viper front end. Sorry, not Viper, it's Corvette. Very, very, yeah. Well, that's that's the very like the coupe style has always been a longer, you know, front end. The whole entire era from the the seventies was was front end to longer. Um, yeah. 
and uh, you know that's where you get your fair lady. But you, you, I, I just love that they've they've taken all that. This is a good looking car, in my opinion. Sixty k would be a great buy. Similar price to the Mustang, but not many other serious performance cars at that price. I mean, again, if it's dropping four hundred horses. <laughs> As a baseline, you're doing pretty well. That's a freaking good start. That is a really, really good start. Josh, apparently your uh, your team won a game without you, so probably just thought I'd let, just thought I'd let you know. Probably, that's probably why they won. <laughs> I wasn't on the team. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, did you um did you do any ask me questions on your Insta? I did. Did you? Curtis, you did one as well, yeah? Yeah, I just got a lot of uh, interesting statements. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. bit> of <laughs> well, well, so did I. So I did I. Hands. So I'll uh, I'll probably start off. Um, are we are we letting are we outing the people who asked the questions or said the statements or what are we doing? Oh uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. They thought so, they'd get away with it. They thought they'd get away. With it. So so uh, we've got Evan, good good lad. He's the owner of GR Supra. He, uh, he goes, you probably enjoy pineapple on pizza, and so do I. This is a true fact. Big fan of pineapple on my pizza. It's probably going to start a massive riot now. Uh, everyone's like, oh, no, pineapple doesn't. Stop shaking your head. You know I've had pa- I've I've known you for 14 milk, years. Yeah, I don't agree with it. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I like pineapple on pizza. That's a my thing. Don't hate me for it. Tell us in the comments. Pineapple, <laughs> yes or no, or do you belong in the bin? Do you, do you, you really you usually have pineapple and pizza, wash that down with what Pepsi and milk? <laughs> no, no, just water. I can't do fizzy drinks after eating, you know, then I bloat, then I turn into an extra wide body kit. Don't want that. You turn into Liberty a pineapple. walk. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I had um, I had Bez just uh, straight up out me go. 1v1 on Fall Guys. So, Bez, don't you worry, mate. One of these nights, we'll link up and we'll play Fall Guys. Yeah, nice. Um, I had my little cousin, Aisha. She's like, I don't have one, but I love you and miss you so much. Nice. Don't stress. Aisha should be over soon. We'll be able to have some curry nights. It should be sick. Um, Mr. Heartbreak himself, he goes, you lying about them fake-ass wheels, boy. Oh. Yes. Yes, I, I'm not lying. My wheels are fake. I'm telling everyone on live no, well, right now it, at 8.42. <laughs> yeah, I have fake wheels on my Mazda 3. I got a really good price and the spec that they are fit my build perfectly. But if someone has legitimate work mices in the specs that I have, hit Most me up. Most one bite off you. <laughs> no, I said hit me up. If it's I'd just like to see catastrophically if anyone has those specs out there. Huh? I just like to see if anyone has those specs out there. Like, yeah. So I'm 18 by 9.5 plus 30 on the front, 18 by 10 plus 25 on the rear. So let me know if you've got yeah, those specs. That's a unique. That's a very very. Unique. <laughs> Why does it matter? Why does it matter if you have fake wheels or real wheels? Well, I don't know. I I love my car. I love the way it is. I love the wheels. I love the color scheme. I love everything about it. But there are so, some people out there who are like. Oh, don't put fake wheels. Don't put wheels on your car if you can't afford genuines. I'm like, hey man, it's my car. I do what I want. I love it. I see it every morning. Just hovercraft. If you can't own real wheels, hovercraft. That's what I do now. <laughs> I'd, like um, to, I, I'd like to argue the fact that like, all right, so those wheels have completed the build for you and I can guarantee you now, even though you're a part of the car community, you, you are literally co-owner of Vivid, host car meets, Previous to this, without taking all of that into uh, you know into the argument, if you had the wheels on, go to plenty of meets. If you don't have the wheels on, you're like, ah, oh, my car's not finished yet. I'm not going to go out tonight because it's a really high quality show or a really good meet or really you know whatever or such. And eh, my car's not finished. You know, it's just this. I'm not allowed. They're going to. I me. would rather see more people with fake wheels attending the car community and becoming good friends because at the end of the day, I- I'm not there. Um, I'm not going to damn your wheels. You know, I'm not going to DM your car. At the end of the day, I'm going to DM you because we're mates. You have a great personality. I met you through the car scene. And I met you because your wheels gave you the, you know, confidence to come out and say hi. 
and threw that fact out. I think uh, Mo threw that card at you because he liked your CC, but anyway. No, I was, okay. Here, let me tell you the exact reason why I threw this guy a card, okay? I'm running late to work. Now, if I'm running late to work, I'm driving like an absolute spastic, but I'm watching what I'm doing, right? And I see this bloody Passat keeping up with me in traffic. I've illegally, illegally, note to self, overtaken this guy doing a right turn. I'm like, straight through the, the emergency lane back in. This Passat has done the same thing. I was like, if this is an undercover cop, I'm losing my license. I'm telling you right now, right? Then I'm like, eh, cops weren't going in old school Passat. And then he rocks up and I'm like, this guy's earned my respect on this drive. Like, and mind you, it's like a couple of drives in. It's probably the fourth time he's Mexico. mirrored my psychoness in the drive. Huh? It was it when you went to Mexico? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving to Mexico. On the way to work to Mexico. Accidentally stepped into Mexico as I was uh, driving to work. Um, and then I'm like, this guy has earned my respect by hanging, hanging, keeping up with me while I'm running late to work. So he's made my drive a little bit more accelerating, even though it already was. Um, and then just window down. I'm like, so he pops his window down and I have no idea how I did it or what I was thinking. I literally put the card in both my hands and I've just flung it really hard, hoping that it cuts through the air and lands on his this dash. This thing like Captain American shield at me. Like it was just literally. <laughs> <laughs> and then as I've done that, he's like, got it. And the light went green and I've just. Boom. The funny part about that is like, there was actually one point where I think you slowed down. For, for very good safety reasons, apart from everything. And I sat there, I'm like, dude, I need to get to work. Like, move. <laughs> like, <laughs> so there was this... I mean, if my car was quick enough, I probably would have actually taken the opportunity to go past you. But that was never going to happen. Like, <laughs> I think, like, the ego nah, challenge, you, you would have just downshifted. <laughs> they, they got to a point where... They got to a point where... Um, Curtis would be like, hey, man, I'm about to leave home now. So I'd be like, yeah, I've already left. So he'd be like... Ah! Jump in the car, try and get to the same meeting point as usual. But sometimes we're a minute or so late. You know, sometimes we're if we're if I've turned the roundabout of Hall Road and he's just come down, all I see is headlights flash. So obviously I'll back go up, back up, back up, back up, do sixty and a hundred, and then as soon as he turns that corner, it's a hundred in the hundred. Legal. I still remember every, every single time I got early, I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be early, you know. And I'm messaging, you'd be like, oh, I'm just passing BP now. I'm like, oh, I'm two roundabouts ahead of you. So I'd pull over to the service lane. <laughs> and then I'd just like wind down the window and I just hear, rrrr, rrrr, and I'm like, oh, here he comes. Yep. <laughs> Turns around the about. The greatest one like, was your merge onto the, onto the, back onto the highway. Cause I'm in left lane and I, I see this Passat in the emergency just lane just stopped. And I'm like, pop over to the right. And this guy's just gassed it in the service lane. <laughs> Just merged at the same and I think scene. I think I was Josh like, was in the left great. lane, so there was all three. Yeah, Josh is in the Skoda yeah. behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in I'm in the left lane, like the service lane, like hitting off the road, like yeah. at a hundred plus, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I've got to catch up to these boys. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, what else have I got? Um, got some profanity, <laughs> huh? R-rated stuff. Oh, just my mate. Jake in Queensland goes, you must have a massive dong for driving a bag Mazda 3. So can't confirm, can confirm, won't confirm. <laughs> I, I got similar. It was everything. Everyone just said big dig energy, bring it to the, bring it to the stream. So I mean, yeah. you get nothing less. Like, let's be honest. You get nothing less. Uh, and if you see um, us had... in person, you'll get nothing less. <laughs> uh, Tolone goes, you are the nicest person ever with a genuine heart and many have taken advantage of it. Big love for you, bro. It's a journey. Like a roller coaster. Um, Stacy said your golf was quicker. Yes, very, lots, lots quicker. Um, it was a like my, my Mazda will run a twenty-second quarter mile if I'm lucky, and the golf did it in less than twelve. The golf was also sixty thousand dollars, and the Mazda's thirty thousand dollars. So it's half. Still twelve. I ran an eleven eight. No way. At one one at one hundred and seventeen. Yeah, nice. A month before I sold it. Pretty happy. I have the time slip somewhere, but I can't find it because I've moved houses twice since then. I'm pretty sure I've got it in a book somewhere. Probably in Mark Webber's book. <laughs> I, the the um, one thing that I was looking forward to was actually putting the RS3 against the golf. Because for all of those mornings, you had me. You had me dead to rights. For every car meet we went out to, you had me dead to rights. For every single time we went out, 
you had me every time. And then like, I was like, hey man, just got this. You're like, got a master. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <sighs> well, to give, you a, to give you a bit of a comparison, a facelifted RS3 with a ECU tune only was still a car behind me. It was quick. It was yeah. quick. A stage two, as we talk in stages, so a downpipe intercooler E85, I was half a car behind, if not a car behind, facelifted RS3. So the 7R was a unicorn and put me on the map with a lot of people out there who knows of the car and have no idea who I am. Uh, but driver mod, it was a manual and it outran DSGs, which was great. James said, uh, when sold, never raced, lady owned, logbook service. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, it's somewhere in Queensland now. So I have no idea uh, where, who, when. Um, but yeah. Good luck to him. Uh, <laughs> good luck to him. Uh, I've got one from Hannah says, you're the greatest. Um, one from Molly saying, you love me as much as I love you. True story. Um, Alex Pascal says, you poured the milk before the cereal. No, definitely not. Cereal first and then the milk so you know how much milk you need. Otherwise, if it's too much milk, Definitely. you're having soup. What the hell is that? What? Real question. First. Do you pour the Pepsi first or the milk first? Uh, Pepsi first and then the milk so you know how much milk to have. <laughs> Why would so, you pour the milk first and then the cereal? I don't know, man. There's some people out there that... Sociopath, know, man. It's like the people yeah, that they... like put on a sock, then a shoe, and then a sock and a shoe. Like, I put sock, oh, sock, shoe, shoe. Like, mm. Yeah. What? So it's Nick like, Nicholas Finity like just said exists. Nick has just said get an yeah, RX seven Mo. Nick just said get an RX seven. Nick, just to let you know, I can't fit in an RX seven. I've tried in my made a Miller's car and I got one butt cheek and one leg in and I couldn't get the other butt cheek in. And he was lying Sad down. Times. He was lying down <laughs> <laughs> He's no, I the hatch. <laughs> cannot fit. I cannot fit. Maybe after Rona and I drop drop my wide body kit, go for a keto kit, might work. I don't know. Get a, get a chaser, um, Mike Donchie. Get a chaser. A chaser, yes. a chaser. Um, I got one from Jenna. Uh, you wear your heart on your sleeve and that you always take care of your friends and family. Love you long time. Um, Love to you, Jen. My curry friend, Samani, she, go, she <laughs> says, you have a sexy friend named Sam. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> confirmed, confirmed. Um, John Vader has outed me saying my hand controller works properly for my bags. Now, it does when it feels like it. <laughs> it's something in the setup. The car doesn't air out when I park or it sometimes anyone, doesn't air up. Anyone, okay, this is a tip for anyone that's going to go in Mo's car after ISO, obviously. Oh, stop it, Josh. So he's drive, he drives you to your destination. You're in the passenger seat. And he turns the car off as the car's airing down or left and right or whatever. Open the passenger door before it airs out fully. Please do it. Please do it and film his reaction. Essentially what it does is it shuts off the accessory and stops the bag. So you've just got yeah. mid So you can literally the... just air out one way. <laughs> I would hate Thanks to like air out the wrong way because the door would just go straight to the ground. Yeah. Well, see, this is the problem now. These are all um, things that Mo didn't even think of and I had to tell him to tell his passengers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's one, one thing I didn't think of. I'm that low to the ground now that if you open the door, it will hit the side edge of the concrete. So I don't know what to do. I knew this was going to become a problem. Like, I knew this was going to become a problem. I, I can't wait for the day. I mean, this is going to sound really horrible because I'll be there right next to you, no doubt. And we'll like just, just smash heads over this. But like, I can't wait for the day where we're like driving around and somehow like a bag punctures and you're literally not even a millimeter off the ground. You're on the ground. I'm like, like, oh, just chuck a jacket it's underneath so, it. You know? like, it's so rare for a bag to pop if not installed properly. So rare. I did all of this research before getting them. I'm like, I don't want a daily this car. I don't want a bag to neck itself on my way to work. I literally, I, my front is on the ground. Like my under tray, my, the bottom is like, if you go out and look at it now, it's, like there's no movement there. It is a Although car I do have an, with the gravel. <laughs> I do have an air jack, so that's good. Just plug it in, it'll pump it up. Right. Got to think of these things. Right. <laughs> uh, what else have I got? 
Um, Alicia says, I like my pasta salad with bacon in it. No, I don't. Don't eat bacon. Oh, I am yeah. pork or bacon. Why? No. <laughs> no. Uh, the only reason she said that is one time uh, she used to work with us and she bought breakfast for everyone. And she's like, oh, I got you breakfast. I was like, yeah, sweet. She goes, yeah, I got you a ham and, ham and cheese sandwich. But I, I don't eat ham. Oh, what about tomato and ham? I still don't eat ham. I had to go through this whole explanation for this thing. So, yeah, I can have tomato and cheese. So that's a good combination. Got that one wrong. Got that one wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, my mum, my beautiful mum, commented, son, yes. Yes, mum, that is your first impression of me because I am your son. Your first. <laughs> and then you've got Arif. <laughs> your second. <laughs> I love her to death. She is my 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 rock, my umbrella, and the greatest human alive. Um, Steffi IDC from Instagram thought it'd be really hilarious to just write gay. So, look, if I came across gay the first time I met you, I love everyone the same. We're all in this one planet. We have to make the most of it, and I'm friendly. So I'm sorry. We're in the planet. But here we are. We're not on the planet. Huh? We're in the planet. Are we in the planet or on the planet? Like, we're not inside the core. We're, like, on the land of the planet. I don't know. You told you said in the planet, so I'm asking you. Did I say in? Sorry, I was going to say on. My bad. You literally like, we're in the planet? No, you can't be in the planet. <laughs> I contradicted myself within my own questions and statements. Terrible. Well, you're on it because because the world's flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, flat. yeah. Uh, you're yeah. right. On the flat Earth, there. The Earth isn't flat, Josh. It is. I'm a flat Earther, mate. You're a flat, flat Earther. Earther. You, you're a dong head. <laughs> um, I, I had a a, a money. I don't know who she is. I don't follow her. I'm so sorry. Uh, what's the last uh, name? You what's, miss. What is it? Money. M o double n i j t. Uh, anyway, so she goes, you miss the people you used to be close to and that you like cars. So, yes and no. Uh, well, so I do love cars. Like, yeah, that's the assumption she's making about you. I gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah, okay. So just want to reiterate that. Yeah, so... She, okay. didn't, she, didn't, re she didn't rewrite your life, Mo. You <laughs> wake up, read the Insta, and it's like, shit, this is yeah. how I'm going to live today. I this is it. Close this is the only one. <laughs> this is the only one. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Just a, just a statistics. Um, not really bothered by it, but just I had four hundred and seventy people see that story, and I only got twenty five assumptions. So just a bit of stats for you. Get the calculator out. Get the calculator out. Thanks, Curtis. No, oh, please don't even bother. How much? Wait, yeah. hold up. What's the uh, how many there it is. followers? 411 people viewed my story. Right. 23 of them replied. Oh, do we just disconnect? No, that sounded like your Discord. I haven't got Discord. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that comes to the end of my responses. So everyone who took the time out of their day to reply or say something, I appreciate you, each and um, every one of you, because you took time out of your lives to say something funny I believe or it's random. A, it's about a 16th, I think. 16%? No, 16th. One sixteenth. Sixteen. Yes. Right, right, right. Cheers. I know, approximately. Um, did you get many uh, Q&As come through your side, Josh? Uh, you had a few, just in general conversations, like um, what does Vivid stand for? Ah, yes. Or it doesn't really stand for anything. It's more just the colorful the idea, the idea colorful. stand out of the crowd and be different. And you know. I just need this like rainbow star to go over my right now. Like, she yeah, literally, I needed to go over my head, go colorful. Yes, <laughs> it's just like the colors, you know, We're like the neon everyone, cat, like ring. <laughs> Come to our events. But just in, in general as well, like um, I think we like to do things a bit differently, I guess, to every other sort of car club or car community or whatever it is. Um, we like to sort of think outside the box. Um, and yeah, just go for it. 
and even stuff like um, the video shoot we've done for a few rappers and stuff like that, you know, to get a car club involved and involve the car community. We think it's pretty cool. We were pretty happy with that. Have you got a, uh, a link or anything to uh, the results of that? The video shoot? What are you talking uh, about? Yes. Yes, I will put them in the comments a little bit later. Cool, cool, cool. Such uh, a fun night. It was good. I had a couple of people asking um, what was the favourite events, uh, like car events. Um, and I think that's a pretty good question for like kind of all of us. Like, I think my favourite, it's it's really hard because I, they, they all have a different I guess, purpose and I guess different different memories in each one. But like, I really loved, I really loved the drift day you guys had. Like, that was probably one of the most exciting, just like impromptu things. Like, I literally woke up and I was just like, I gotta go. Like, for for once, I have the day off. I have the ability. I caught up my man. I was. I, it was the night before, and I messaged him, um, and I was just like, "This is drift day tomorrow. Do you want to go for a drive up to Winton, cruise up from the Black Spur, and then hang out with the drift cars and Vivid?" And he's like, "Yeah, that sounds great." So literally just jumped in his WRX, had a nice cruise up, and that was fun. Like that. That part is always you know great, but like the whole day was just. Freaking awesome. There was a lot of people there that I didn't even know of. I don't know a lot of people who were in the drift scene or even like track scene and like the rocking up and just seeing everyone sharing <coughs> tools and just sharing experience and helping each other out. And it was just like really big eye opener to a lot of people like, oh, the car scene's so toxic. And it's like, yeah, well, if you hang out at, um, you know, Master's Car Park every single Saturday night and only talk to the same people and that's the only environment that you have. I can understand how you would find, you know, those things, but I think you can't make any accurate, um, you know, comments to how the car scene is until you've actually experienced the other side of that, which is, you know, people who see it as a sport as well. Um, and the, that collaborative measure on that day was just like a real eye opener. And I was like, there was nothing toxic about that day. There was nothing that represented anything negative that day and i was like you know for the fact that you guys set it all up everyone helped you set up and then everyone helped you take it all down and then everyone helped put cars on trailers and everyone helped put tools away and everyone helped do everything whether it was the fact that someone pulled cones down to putting a banner up whatever it was like it was just something that i was like this is cool like this is this is what i love to see and i think like that definitely sparked is like my favorite event that i've ever been to um even you know, even comparing that to car show events, like I, I definitely have a lot of memories from Hot Import Nights as per our previous streams and that, but I think the accessibility of that drift down, I'm really looking forward to more of those once this is, um, you know, this is where That's I'm locked in. We like to do sort of like grassroots, Yo, you know, just um, just general stuff Yo, like that. So, Josh, Nick. Josh has gone mute. You've gone mute, Josh. Yeah, he's playing a video by accident. <laughs> oh, nice. So he's muted himself. <laughs> um, James has actually brought up the fact that, uh, you know, topic-wise, um, started a YouTube channel. So... Uh, yeah, definitely want to get into that properly. Um, obviously, once lockdowns lift, because then we have the, the the freedom to go and you know park up somewhere or do something. Like the first actual videos we want to do, Josh and I want to do like an introduction. Like we are who we are. This is what we drive, and you know, like welcome to our our lives because we want to you know make everyone feel comfortable with what they drive. You can drive a five hundred dollar Nissan Exa to a $500,000 Lamborghini, Gallardo or Huracan, however much they are, but you, you won't be treated any different because we want to see everyone as equals because that's we're the same as you. I mean, we've just built this, you know, environment for you to feel safe. Right, and it, like we're going to do obviously member rides and, you know, covering our events and just give people, you know, a nice, nice picture. We want to, we want to do like a, like a, like, if people can't make it to our meets, they can watch our video and be like, oh man, we didn't get to go, let's watch the video. And it'll be literally just either Josh or myself 
walking around that meet saying hello to everyone. We're like, hey man, just say hey to our channel. Um, what do you drive? You know, what made you come here? That's what we want to give you because if you had been there in person, that's what you would have talked about. Like, hey man, I've just got a new set of wheels, you know, oh yeah, sweet, show us. So, you know, walk over to the car, have a look at it. Try be your eyes if you can't make it to our meets is what we're, what, what we're aiming for, basically. One of my favorite events out of all the things we've done is um, go-karting on Winton Raceway. <laughs> Literally every time I speak about it, either on socials or to anyone in person, they're like, when, how, like, what, what is even happening? How's that possible? I'm like, yep, we rented go-karts and then we went on Winton Raceway. They're like, oh, they have a go-kart track there. I'm like, no, no, no. They actually, we were we on, drove on Winton. We were right, on the so race track. Pretty amazing. <laughs> That's but just stuff like that, you know, if we had, unfortunately, like, you know, we didn't really have a YouTube channel then, but if you can document events like that. that like the like GoPro that. helmet footage of that would have been sick. I'm, I'm 100% all over this. And that's the other thing as well is like, um, I'm, I'm keen to get in on the, the supporter and you'll, you'll, there we go. So James has just put up the, Thank uh, you, the Thank link. Thanks, there. James. And the straight the lockdown, down. if it's not going to be from you guys, it's going to be from myself as well, because... You know, I, I've done one vlog of, of actually that that uh, drift day that I was talking about before and like that was all cool and great, but that's something that um, I 100% agree with you. I think it needs to be documented and, and like, you can tell people about it. Like right now we can draw, like draw up the picture and paint the picture and just be like, yeah, this is what happened. But there's nothing compared to just the thrill of being there and like the, the surrounding yourself in that environment. Whether it's like listening to you know people cheering and you know carrying on and then being competitive or ties are screeching in the background or it's the fact that like you're on winton track literally two millimeter off the ground and the cart that's just flying down or the, the cart is drifting beside you slapping the door and you've got the camera on his hand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly i think that was curtis's favorite part of that event <laughs> that was that was so so crazy it was just the fact that like i literally was just like all right look out front whoa we're sideways you know look at andrew damn like doing a good job with everything you're doing and then i look to my left and i'm just like there's another car that i can touch right here there's another car right there that, way, that to confirm that was the driver slap in the door yeah but he was shifting gears steering the car and, and slapping outside <laughs> And it was just, it was, it was impressive. And uh, I think that's just something I really need. I uh, like, I know that, you know, a lot of people talk about, um, uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, oh yeah, like, you know, I'm not as fortunate as you, you know, we don't, don't have these people, I don't know this, don't do that. And like, you know, they want to get into the car scene and, and a lot of people who probably aren't even watching this because they don't know that this stuff exists. And it's just, I like my biggest goal at the moment is just create more awareness about how accessible it is to live a happier life. And like, I find so much happiness in this. Like there's, there's millions of memories that have been had with these two gentlemen that I'm streaming with right now. And like, we could talk about it for, for days on end. In fact, we could probably do a stream just the three of us every day of the week and still come up with like some good stories and memories that we have. Um, we and, won't though, because then people will get bored of us. They'll be like, oh, yeah, these three again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and But but the point is, is just like how easily accessible this is. Like we, we talk about these days and it sounds like a dream come true. It sounds like something, you know, like, oh, that would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Like if you didn't talk about it like it actually happened, people would be like, that's a cool fantasy, dude. Like that'd be cool if that happened. But it's like, no, this, this shit happened. All of this happened. And this is what happens when you meet the, the right people and get yourself involved in the community. You reach out to someone, you say hi, you know, a lot of people are sitting there on Sundays, barely able to cope because they've locked themselves inside and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do. And I'm just like falling into this routine. I don't have a nice car. I can't go out and meet these guys. I'm just going to watch another 13, 20 video and, and, and maybe I won't even watch, you know, TJ Hunt and uh, and just live vicariously through YouTube. Well, I say Winston's Maybe you might watch the, uh, the World of Vivid YouTube channel as well. Exactly. But I say when all this is over, get your asses off the couch and just come in. I don't care what you drive. I don't care if you don't drive. Like, I, I remember meeting uh, Sari, which is James. Um, you know, James is a young photographer. He was 16 when I met him. And, and now he's got his own golf um, driving. And when I first met him, he was an excellent neighbor to my best mate. Messaged me and was like, hey, man, is that your RS3 outside my house? And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like, I wasn't even thinking <laughs> of that. I'm literally at my mate's Dogger. house. And... He was just like, love it, man. I would love to take some photos of it. I'm like, done. Like, you let me know when and where. 
I'll be there, take some photos. And, um, and I remember every single time I went to my mate's place, he was like, hey, you must be at Aaron's, I can hear you. And then like, I would literally just drop him off and drive by and he'd be like, hey, just heard you go down the street. And it was just one of those things that like, the guy didn't even drive at the time. He had a camera, sure, but you don't even need that. You could just come in and say hi to people. And like, I'm 100% welcoming on that. I don't care whether you can drive, you, you don't drive. I don't care if you're 34 and you haven't got a license. Like. If you have that involvement, again, what we said with the fake wheels and all this other stuff, I ain't going to DM your wheels. I'm DMing you. And on the day, I'm going to be talking to you. And you're the one I'm going to be making memories with. So, you know, it doesn't matter and what car you have. If you watch this stream and it, it led you to text your mate to say, hey, you know, in the stream I was watching and the, the new Z's got a mechanical handbrake. Literally, this is why we're doing that stream. It's for yeah. people to talk to each other. Yeah. You know, literally pick up the phone just message someone you haven't messaged in the last six months start the conversation See how that goes. start the conversation yeah. and i mean if, let if us you're know. Really keen to like come out to these events let us know like or if you have any suggestions or you like you haven't been to one and you're like oh like i have a suggestion you'll probably find it it's probably been done and we can be like yeah by all means we do that like you want to meet on a wednesday night and go grab kebabs it's we, it's going to happen you want to come out and do drifting it's gonna happen. You want to go go karting on a, a track? It's gonna happen. Like, and if you want to message us on Instagrams, go mo, go. You can yeah, start mo, with... drop us the uh, the link. You know, what am I doing? Plug the Instagrams, please, with the uh. Oh, Josh's Instagram, as you see it just there, and you got Curtis's just below him as well, and mine, obviously. <laughs> see, look at that. Shoot us a message. Got it down pat. Chat. Huh? Shoot us a message. Comment. Yeah, anything, even just send us a like react to our stories or do whatever. Now, a lot of people find it more comfortable to text than it is to talk in person. But if you don't say, hey, we may not get to you because we've got 200 people there. I try my best to get to everyone. Um, but just literally be like, hey, man, nice fake wheels. I'll be like, cheers, bro. It's all I could afford. <laughs> and literally, right once, now. Message the lifeline. The text is down there at the bottom. Yes. Yeah, just like all our streams, we've got our lifeline there, our text line as well. Um, but our, all three of our inboxes are open. The Vivid inbox is open. Josh and I both see it. Most of the time, Josh replies. Um, unless they specifically say no, then I'll look at it. <laughs> I don't want to see a message and then Josh misses it and then he blames me for seeing a message. You know, I don't want to create drama. <laughs> no, we have a system and it's working perfectly fine. So unless Batson says, hey, man, can you jump into this message? I usually just let him handle it. Um, Insta messages I usually get to prior because Josh is sometimes busy, but we just, we work together. That's the best way of doing it. Um, here's a great example, actually. So James, who has been commenting through this, has just sent me a friend request. I'm like, 100% yes, except that. All, every day, every, all day, every day. Scroll down. James, is your Corvette Stingray still for sale? Because like, I'm just going to say it out there, there is a 1969 uh, Corvette Stingray manual um that james is looking to sell it has been club permit with uh vivid motorsports yeah club <laughs> permit um and i mean you posted it up in may 10 that was one of the last things you posted but nevertheless it's caught my attention so i thought i'd chuck it out here in case uh it is still up for sale and just do that nice cheeky plug uh, but again like i love the cars you got a camaro on your page man i'm gonna be messaging you after this because like <laughs> having a dialogue and be like this is sick um, you also had an ls supra yes yes he does he had an LS Supra. Whew. Uh, he had. So you got a buyer just waiting for the post. Like, love it. Love to hear, man. Love to hear. Um, but awesome. okay, next next Thanks. question. You said you're uh, sorry. One last one. I know we're getting pretty late on this, but I just want to ask James. Closing up the chapter. What's next? 400Z. Listen. YouTube. Um, get on to James's channel as well. So talk the talk. James has actually done a review of one of my previous cars, my R32 GTR. The beast. Um, probably lining up the 35 in the next few weeks when we are allowed. So talk the talk on YouTube. Buying and super buying back. Super back. Hey. <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Why don't you save the money and go for a 400Z? <laughs> Better put a turbo on that one, James. <laughs> but cool car, LS Supra. Imagine a Supra nice. rocking up to a Vivid Meat. And you hear it rumbling like a V8. Oh. That's a problem. I'd be like, sorry? 
Yeah, I like I like how people are so okay with that, but yeah, they got problems with fake wheels. Like, <laughs> where do you draw the line, bro? <laughs> man i don't know like when someone walks up to you and they're like you know they, they chuck on their sunnies and they're like oh bro i hate the fake wheels and you're like dude you got fake ray bands on like what, yeah. what, what do you what are you here for bro like you came out shirt you came out sneakers like don't judge anything i don't care what you wear myself but if you're gonna dish it out you better I'll, like sit there and wait for me to dish it back to you because i'm more than happy mm. to do that if you're gonna ramble up that uh you're gonna stir the pot in the community and now, just for to keep our shout outs going, guys, uh, jump on the Vivid website. We've got a few colors in uh, online, ready to rock and roll. So we've got some new colors we've launched um, and a new few colors will be coming out in the next few weeks as well. So keep an eye out. Also, if um, the people who are watching, if anyone has an idea for our next guest, let us know. Um, we've got our, well, obviously like our inbox is open. Like who do you want to see? What do you want to know? Do you want us to be us three again next week? You tell us. We're and here for you. Guys. you want us to break down, like what we did, we tore apart the uh, the, the four on the Z. Like, or, I'm, I'm fanboying. What if moment. we did a rate your car? Yes. How's that? Yeah. Send us your car. We'll rate it. Let's do that. Let's make that our next episode. Rate your car. Sounds good. We'll get everyone to see. an idea. Again. Choose a good, like, top Tell us what you think. And, um, when we'll rate the cars. We'll Go like it or we hate it. We'll uh, send it in to our... Uh, better not have rep wheels. <laughs> love or hate. We'll do a love or hate. <laughs> but please don't take it seriously. <laughs> no. We're welcoming on anything. Okay. Honestly, Let like... Vivid, Vivid just drops off all the bloody, um, you know, things. Vivid just drops off all the, the likes. They're all gone. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll keep it's it gonna, fun. We'll keep it's going to have a real big donut for like the, the attendees of that live chat. Just <laughs> or the two people that come will offend them. <laughs> Sweet. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up uh, this episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. It's something a little bit different. Um, and, you know, we saw that uh, the Z got released and thought it would be a great uh, conversation point And, um, you know, let's evolve to this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks, everyone, who stuck by. You know, we've got 12 now. We had a good peak before. Um, and uh, you know we appreciate every bit of support that you guys provide uh, again let us know if uh, there's anything we can do to, to improve or what you'd like to see next time in the in the comments and um, we'll catch you there beautiful guys Thank good you. night guys take it easy take it easy guys <laughs> nice <laughs>